This segment documents the sculpting process of Richard Hathaway, a sculpture created for my book, Bringing to Life the Spirit of the Deceased, A Sculptor's Journey, which was a part of my college thesis. The book documents the journey of an artist through the life and remembrance of four individuals, Professor Hathaway being the final bronze listed in the book. Unlike the other sculptures in the book, which were all commissions from individuals and of people that I have never met, I did briefly meet Professor Hathaway at a residency program at Vermont College Union Institute. I was absolutely charmed by this man after hearing one of his lectures. Everyone at the college was stunned when Professor Hathaway, known to his friends as Dick, passed away. My instructor, Charlotte Hastings, who was very supportive of my research that I was doing on bringing to life the spirit of the deceased, a sculptor's journey, was touched when I asked if I could add Dick Hathaway to my study and my book. Together we began to pull the information necessary to proceed with what at the time was going to be a portrait bust. There was memorial photographs to obtain, reference that I would use, video footage, permission from the family, and because this was intended for a placement at the university, I also had to receive permission for the project. In all, it was a massive undertaking especially since I was only in Vermont at residency for a week. But Charlotte and I were convinced we could pull it off. Motivation for the project waned when, much to my despair, my beloved professor, Charlotte Hastings, passed away. And then one day I was reminded by someone just how much Charlotte loved Dick. Those words have played over and over in my heart and have been a new motivating factor for me. The sculpture took off from there, and somehow it just all started to come together. The T.W. Woods Gallery that is located in the historical building on the campus agreed to become the keepers of the Dick Hathaway sculpture, which now had grown into a life-size bronze. A pose was decided on, and a student similar in size to Dick Hathaway posed on one of the outdoor benches. Dick Hathaway was known for his collections. I received permission to visit Dick's office. <laughs> this was quite a feat, as his wonderful book collection was sold and getting into the office was somewhat like getting into Fort Knox. I was searching for the memorial photographs that Charlotte had promised to send. This would be some of my only reference of my subject. While in Dick's office, I took pictures of things and thought about the man, his life, and his collections. This is a part about finding the deceased, something I've written over and over again in my book. One friend asked, How do you spend so much time in the past? As a sculptor who specializes in creating posthumous sculptures, it is my job. My future is their past, I replied, as I thought about this man that I was going to sculpt, who also spent so much time in the past. He was a historian, and that is what I am and what I do. I'm a historian of life. Back in my Houston, Texas sculpting studio, I fabricated a bench about the size of the bench in Vermont, I pulled together my reference material, and began to build the armature. An armature is a skeletal structure of the sculpture. It is what will support the clay. This armature is made with rebar, and foam was glued together to form the mass of the body. Each piece is then carved away to get a general shape. Then a layer of hot wax is painted over the foam to keep the grit from getting into the clay. Classic clay is melted in crock pots in my studio and is painted onto the armature. Apprentices help with many tasks of preparing the armature. The video footage that was provided by the university and that I had digitized was so helpful, not only as reference for the face and gestures of the body, but also as inspiration for the emotion in the sculpture. Many times when sculpting posthumous sculptures, I'm provided with the loved one's clothes. And this is very helpful because it allows me to know the size and the proportions of the loved one. With Dick, it was a guessing game. There were no clothes to measure. So I utilized things that I had measurements of and compared them to Dick such as the podium used at the graduation ceremony or the shelves in the library, even his daughter at her wedding. Taking a chance on the size and proportions, more clay is added and the sculpture morphs into a human form. I love working on shoes. It is also a good thing to let the apprentices practice on. I purchased a pair of shoes that were the size of Dick Hathaway's and the type of shoes that I thought he would wear. Once again, pieces of foam were carved and slowly clay was added. The head is created separate from the body. This allows me to spend a lot of time and be very close to my subject. The most important element that has helped me with the sculpture of Dick was his glasses. 
I was thrilled when these came in the mail. Often Dick Hathaway's friends would ask me to sculpt him at an age differently than what I knew him as. And that is not difficult. I'm asked to do that quite often with sculpture commissions, but I had no one client to dictate the age, so I had to wait and see what age Dick Hathaway would come out as. Another portion of the Dick Hathaway sculpture is the satchel that sits at his feet. This is a satchel that is filled with books. On top is a letter that reads, Dear Richard Hathaway, may all that come after you emanate your love of family, history, education, and philanthropy. With great appreciation, your family, friends, colleagues, and students. In the satchel, there are several different books. One is titled A Book For You, because Dick always had a book for you. Another is titled Progressive Education. And there are various trinkets, each with their own special meaning, that are discussed in my book, Bringing to Life the Spirit of the Deceased. Now that the Dick Hathaway sculpture is almost complete, it will be ready to go to the foundry to be turned into a bronze, and then Dick Hathaway will go home to the Green Mountain State. <laughs>